our second topic today is origin destination matrix estimation. So I will be referring to this as ODME. And today we're just going to talk about how to get this set up and how to actually add in all of your count information and then how to run through this procedure. So what exactly is ODME used for? Well, if you have a demand matrix and perhaps it's a bit outdated um, and you have maybe more recent count data either on for turning movements or on links, it seems like most everyone is, a lot of people are using link data. So if you have maybe more recent count data, that can be used to update a demand matrix to kind of match those values. So essentially, we'll take our network model and demand matrix that we just built up, run that through our assignment procedure, and then those assigned volumes will be compared against the count data that's been added to the network. Now, based on that comparison, a matrix correction procedure will be run, and that will update the demand matrix. And then from here, you can repeat that assignment and account comparison and matrix correction process until you've reached um, a, a good, good situation where your assignment result is, is aligning well with that count data. So in order to set this up, we're first going to take a look at how to add that count data to the network. And in this case, we're going to use a user-defined attribute, or UDA, to store all that information. And then we'll take a look at adding in that matrix correction procedure within the procedure window. And then finally, looking at the results so that we can compare the assigned volume to the counts that we've added. So all of the UDAs, or user-defined attributes, those can all be set up under the network menu. And that'll be the third option down there. This will open up a separate window here, and it'll, it'll say attributes up at the top. And in order to add a new one, you can just click the plus button to create a new UDA. And then in this dropdown is where you can change the object that you want to associate that UDA with. So if you wanted to have a link count, you can, you can use links, or you can use turns, or um, select any other object there. From here is where you can add in the attribute ID as well as the code and name. If you actually type in the attribute ID here at the top, these, the code and name will fill in for you automatically and it will just be the, the same value. You can also add a comment as well. And then in this case, you'll probably want to just leave this as an integer and have it set to the data attribute. And then once that has been created and added to the network, then you'll just need to go into the network and update those UDA values. So you can either do that by clicking on the links and then updating the value in that quick view window over on the lower left-hand corner. Um, you can also do this by adding, uh, adding up that, the list for your links or turns and just adding them in through there. You can also add it in through the junction editor as well if you're looking at adding in turn data. All right, so then once we have that UDA set up, then we just need to set up the matrix correction procedure. So if, you, if we return back to that procedure sequence window, again, we'll click Create there. And the demand correction, matrix correction procedure is going to be found underneath the matrices folder. And then once that new line item is add, added here, it'll be demand matrix correction. And then you can choose the drop down here for the reference object and select the desired demand segment that you want to use the correction procedure for. And then underneath variant or file is where you can choose the different method to use. So there are a couple of different options. The first is Tflow Fuzzy. And this uses, uh, gets its name from the fuzzy conditions that it uses. So instead of having a strict limit where it's trying to mat match those counts, it's going to have an allowed tolerance try and, and meet those. The other option is least squares, which is going to take the, the squared distance between the assignment value and the counted value, and then tries to minimize that over each of the iterations. So then once you have those edited from here, um, you, can, you can just click the edit button um, over here once that's highlighted, or you can double click on that line item. 
All right, so then once you click edit, you'll get a, a window over here on the right hand side. And these will be slightly different for least squares and T-flow fuzzy. So we'll just cover all of those differences. Um, most of the tabs are the same for both though. So in this case, for least squares, the, the very first tab here is the count values. So at the very top is where you can choose to only use any object that has volume and actually has a counted value greater than zero. And this will just make sure the procedure will only be run for those locations and try and match those locations where it actually has a count value. If you have a link count UDA, so if you've got link counts, then you can just select the based on counted link volumes option over here in the link section. Similarly, if you have any turn data, you can, you can choose that turn option under turns and main turns. And then from here is where you're going to want to add in that count UDA that you've added. So if you click on the volume option here, this is where you can choose that UDA. And then for at least squares, there's going to be a weight option. So this is where you could, you could update that if you maybe had more link data. Um, that was maybe more reliable. If you wanted the matrix correction to take that into more account, you could increase the weight for that just so that it would, it would know to look at that and place more weight on, on the link option rather than the turn option. And then this is all pretty much the same for least squares. So we have all of those same options. The, um, the, the main difference here for T-Flow Fuzzy is that instead of having a weight, over here on the right hand side, we're going to have a tolerance. So this is where you can select an attribute that's going to contain a fluctuation range that it can use as part of its procedure. And then moving on to the next tab here, this is the count values PRT. And this is the same for both of the options. And in this case, this will allow you to add in any volumes that you have if you had them on individual lanes. And you can also apply a filter. So if you check that active nodes option, you can apply a, create a filter for, you know, only nodes that contain any lane-based data. So that way it would only perform the correction for those specific locations. And then on the distribution tab, this is um, a way that you can distribute the demand segment data based on the skim matrix. You can choose what skim matrix you would want to use and set up any of the class and share information in this window. And then as part of the configuration, uh, this again is where least squares and T-flow fuzzy have a couple of different options. So the first option, which is actually the same for both, this is where you can, if you wanted to lock down the OD pairs that will be updated, so you can create a different matrix uh, that is just a, a matrix with zero and one. And in any location that has a one, that will be an OD pair that can be adjusted. So this is just a way if you maybe have a, a larger group of ODs where you want to keep the current value in the, in the matrix, you can set that to zero and then set any other OD pair that you want to update to something greater than zero. And then for least squares, this is where you can also set up different weights for OD pairs. So if you, if you maybe wanted to put more weight on a particular OD pair, you can select all of that here in the um, lower half of the window. And then for T-Flow Fuzzy, again, you can do um, choose which OD pairs to adjust. This does have a few additional procedure parameters that you can set. So this has a, a max correction factor which will limit the amount of change between the old and the new matrix. You can also set the, the maximum number of iterations and also choose the alpha level, which is a scaling factor that's going to be used um, in conjunction with that fluctuation range. And then finally, we can take a look at the output matrix tab. So this is where the result matrix is going to be saved. Now by default, it's just going to save to the demand matrix associated with that demand segment. Um, you can ch change this drop down if you did want to save the result in a separate matrix so that you could do any sort of comparison or kind of keep that original matrix as is. So you can always update that if you, if you want to save that off in a, in a different location. All right, 
So now we have our ODME set up. Now we're going to take a look at the assignment analysis. And so the assignment analysis is used to view the correlation between the assigned volume and then the count data that has been added to the network. So this is also a separate procedure. And if you go to the assignment dropdown within that um, new procedure, there at the very bottom is an assignment analysis option that you can select. And if you highlight that option and then click edit, that will bring you to this window. And in here is where you can update the network object to look at. So if you had turn data or link data, you can choose that in the dropdown. And then you can also choose the observed value. So this is going to reference that count UDA that has been added to the network. And then it's going to compare it against the model attribute, which is just going to pull that volume uh, PRT attribute. And then finally, you can select only objects with observed value greater than zero. And this will just make sure that there is an actual count value associated with, with the objects that will be included as part of the comparison. All right, and then finally, to view these results, if you go to the Calculate menu and then select Assignment Analysis and Chart, this will bring up uh, a chart down here at the bottom. So over here on the y-axis is going to be that those volume values, and then on the x-axis is going to be the count UDA values. So this is a great way that you can quickly check after each um, iteration of ODME to see how your assignment looks. And you can see here if there are any outliers in the network that you maybe want to take a closer look at. And then over here on the right, you can also see some of the fitness statistics. So you can look at the R squared value and the percent root mean square error over here. And this is just a great way to be able to quickly check after you run that ODME assignment each time and just see how, how that result looks. Okay, so now the setup required for all of these procedures. Um, again, at the very beginning, you're just going to run your initial PRT assignment. And then from there, you can run that demand matrix correction. And then once that matrix has been corrected, you want to rerun that PRT assignment so that uh, that new demand can be added into the network. Then you can go ahead and perform the assignment analysis to bring up that, that chart where you can check the fitness statistics. And if the if um, it still looks like there's some work to be done and maybe it's not meeting your criteria for the statistics yet, then you can go ahead and, and check any outliers, make any network updates if you want to, and then go ahead and rerun the assignment and rerun the demand matrix correction, and then keep checking that until your criteria is met. And then once your kind of assignment results are, are looking good, then your matrix correction is complete, and you can kind of turn off that demand matrix correction and just continue to run that PRT assignment on its own. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So I took that previous file and added in some different count values and then ran that ODME procedure here um, to try and meet, meet those values. All right. So in this network, let me go to the user-defined attributes here. So again, in here, we've created a, a couple of different attributes. In this case, we do have some link counts. So again, these are just an integer data. And then I also have a turn UDA as well. And then also created a couple of different um, formula-based attributes. And so these are just differences that will automatically update and, and compare the counts to the assigned volume. And this will just show up as a different column, um, which I can show you once we run the, the procedure. And this is a, is a good way just to check, you know, for those outliers and see maybe where your, where your differences lie. All right, so in here again, we just have that single car matrix that we're going to be updating. So first I'll just run, I'm just going to uncheck some of these and show you that turn analysis just for the regular assignment. So again, under Calculate, Assignment Analysis is where you can see that chart. Um, 
oh yes, I actually did rerun this, run the SODME earlier. So the, um, but essentially this is where you can see what that, that looks like prior to running any ODME result. And then once you add in that demand correction procedure, uh, matrix correction, in this case we're just running least squares. And here we have, you know, that, the referencing that count UDA attribute for links and then that count UDA attribute for turns as well. And yeah, then, then you can add in all of those procedures and run through those again. And then you can go ahead and take a look at those assignment results. You'll probably want to run this a few times at first just, just so that it can, it can get closer to that assignment. And then, then you can go ahead and check, check these results and check for any outliers. Now, this network is very small, so these results look really good. <laughs> but um, yeah, typically you can, you can just do this for a quick comparison for, um, for your larger networks as well. And then again, if you open up one of those network lists, so if I open up maybe links here, I'll bring that up to this larger window. So this will show us you know, both of our count UDAs and our difference UDA. So I'm just going to filter those counts for any location that was not equal to zero, just so we can see what those counts look like. And then here's where we can just quickly see where those differences are. So I can go ahead and sort those and then check and see maybe what, what some are some locations that are still off. And then from here, you can go ahead and check your network and just make sure um, all of your attributes are set up correctly. Uh, some things to check are maybe the vehicle speed, the allowed transport system, if you had maybe a delay set on any of the turn types, and just make sure those are all updated. And then from here, you can also go in if you didn't want to run the ODME procedure anymore, but maybe you want to fine tune the matrix as well. You can go ahead into that matrix editor and update any of these values as well. If maybe you have just a few outliers that you want to just do some final fine tuning. All right. And so that should wrap up all of the different procedures associated with this origin demand matrix estimation. And um, we'll send out that email after this, after um, the webinar tomorrow. And this will include a link to both the, the initial file that does not have ODME run, and then also a final version that has, has been run through this procedure a few times.